It's Mike Farrell, Adam Gorney, uh, Godfather and Gorney podcast is back. We've been gone for a little while and we're not going to mess around. We're heading right into Gorney's recent quarterback commitment ranking. So I think there were 11. Let me turn this off. Um, I think Plus two, 13 now. Uh, whatever. I don't care. I, I'm, I'm based on the article itself. So I don't know the other two. Uh, as my new role as um, college football everything columnist, I'm going to be extremely overly opinionated about everything now. Uh, people thought I was before. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a big change. Yeah, but it's going to get worse. It's going to get really ugly. Um, so Drew Willar, Penn State, we were just talking off the air. Six foot five, 220 pound kid out of Ohio. High three star going to Penn State. You gave him a B plus. I think that's a little high. He's a big kid. I've seen a little bit of him on film. Um, he's sort of one of those project quarterbacks to me that could be great, but also has a little bit of a bust factor. So I, I, I think lower than B plus. I like him a lot. I think he throws it really well. The, I, the different arm angles is what I love about him. He could throw it into a little tight window there, sidearm it a little bit. He's not going to be a kid that runs around, but I'm thinking Hackenberg with more control. That's what I like about him. Well, Hackenberg kind of sucked. Not at Penn State. He was okay for a little while. For two years when Bill O'Brien was there, and then he just fell off a cliff. That's true, too. So we'll see. I mean, again, Hackenberg is a good comparison because that's a prod project type of kid, a big kid, big arm. But at Fork Union, you know, he was. Eh. Um, yeah. And remember when we saw him, <laughs> that was the first ever five-star challenge, Hackenberg. He was on my team, my 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 Northeast slash Midwest team. Yeah. And he just forced the ball all the time. He threw pick after pick and, you know, it was very frustrating for me. So that was kind of his thing. And and I think Drew has a, a big arm, a horrible offensive line. And I think he forces the ball a little bit. But, you know, listen, he could be great. And and I, I still uh, want him to like me. So uh, I'll say C+. Plus. Uh, Steve Angeli, you gave a B. I'm giving a C-. Minus, and, and this is no offense to Steve. It's just Bergen Catholic. Um, you know, maybe I'm still having... Jared Gorantano flashbacks. Um, I don't see on film uh, a four-star kid. No, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with you. The thing is, is that Ian Book was not a four-star in high school either. And Brian Kelly made him very serviceable to very good at uh, Notre Dame. So I'm, I, I'm going to give him a, a little bump in grade there. Be. You gave him a B because you can't find your own article. You gave him a, a B. B. I know, I know. A B is not a, a not a great grade, not a horrible grade. He's a guy that's going to go there and run the offense and not do anything special. I I'm not a huge Steve Angeli fan on film, so he was one of the lower grades of the day. Yeah. So my point to this is, and I did this in my three point stance, which I can find uh, on the front page of Rivals.com, which you should read. You know, I went through like four teams that need this, that, and the other to happen to take the next step to win the national championship. And I have Oklahoma in there, and that's obviously defense. Duh. With, with Notre Dame, it's quarterback play and outside speed. And I don't see the quarterback recruiting improving. I mean, Tyler Buckner is good, but he barely has a high school resume. Uh, and Jelly, to me, is a little bit of a reach. Um, Ian Book was serviceable, but if you fell behind, you weren't going to win. So, so that's why I give this uh, probably a C, C minus. Um, You're and just again, a tougher grader. Well, these are 17 year old kids, so I'm being kind of a jerk, but and I don't want to be. But you know what? The, the the shackles are off, man. I'm ready. I am ready to, like, just give my opinion on everything. How about that? I like it, and, and yeah, I, I I don't think. You know, did Ian Book hold Notre Dame back from a national championship? Probably not. He put up good numbers. He ran that offense. Speed is what they need all over the field. And look, I mean, we've talked about this a million times. They're not recruiting at the same level of Clemson and Alabama and Ohio State. They're right on that second level cusp, and that's what they need. I don't think uh, Ian Book was holding them back, and I don't think Steve Angeli will hold them back either. Tanner Bailey, B plus. I give it an A, and I'll tell you why. Okay, mm. 
I, I think Ty Thompson's the guy of the future for sure. And Tanner Bailey is a, a down the line guy and, and Jay Butterfield is a portal guy. That's my feeling on Oregon quarterback situation. Tyler Shuck got out of there and there's a good reason for that. And um, I do believe he's not the tallest kid, you know, obviously he's, he's not uh, a statuesque quarterback, but when I see him throw on the run, um, he's a pocket guy, but his accuracy on the run is what's extremely impressive to me. He can make downfield throws, pinpoint accuracy on the run. And to get a kid from Alabama to go to Oregon, that's kind of a big deal. So I, I gave it a, I gave it an A. You gave it a B plus, so we're close. Yeah, I, I like Tanner Bailey a lot. I was surprised that more SEC teams didn't go even harder after him. But the B plus grade is is clearly on can he get on the field at Oregon? Ty Thompson is going to be the guy there. Um, it looks, I, I think that was written on the wall when Tyler Shuck left. So can he get on the field? I, you know, obviously two or three years down the line, we can't predict what's going to go on. You look at quarterback situations around the country and you think you could figure it out, but you can't. Um, sometimes the ball hangs a little bit and in Gordo, Alabama, I don't think is playing this, the speediest secondaries. So, uh, I think that's kind of where he was, but that's huge for him to go out with his family, visit, and then commit right like that. That's huge because LSU was after Mississippi State, Alabama was showing interest for a while before they got Simpson. Mother. So that I think yeah. that's a big commitment for Oregon to, to solidify the quarterback room. Uh, Devin Farrell. So the reason you, you gave this a C, and I, I am just appalled because uh, the last name alone should warrant a B. But I want to read this this part because it makes me happy. There's yeah. no doubt Farrell is a phenomenal athlete and that's why he's used in all three phases. <laughs> yeah. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> <laughs> when is the, I mean, when you were writing that you had to be like, what the hell? This sounds weird. This feels weird. It does. It, it felt weird writing anything positive. <laughs> well, I agree with you on a C. I mean, he's a project. He's a short quarterback. He's sort of like, Demetrius Davis light, the quarterback they had committed last year. Yeah. And, and, but not as good. Uh, but you know, in that system, you just don't know, but yeah, Fuente is not recruiting at a high level. We don't have to spend a whole lot of time on that other than his last name. Um, yeah. He's the one thing. He's definitely a project. He might not even play quarterback long-term there. I don't think, I think they're going to probably bring him in as like a quarterback slash athlete and then sort of see what happens. Well, Cam Chancellor was a quarterback coming out of high school and they've yeah. had other guys that were quarterbacks coming out of high school. Then of course they had a guy who wasn't a quarterback coming out of high school that they made a quarterback, which is Logan Ryan. Uh, I mean, Logan Thomas. Logan Thomas. Um, yeah. So anyways, it's, it's interesting, but this is a new, this isn't, this isn't Frank Beamer and, 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 you know, making the right decisions all the time on who should play where right. it's a different situation. So uh, good luck to them. Holden uh, Garner, Auburn. Yes. Uh, military school kid, 2026, 3 to 15. You gave him a B. I would say probably B minus, but I don't think, I think with Harson, it's more about, you know, between the years than it is physical traits. So I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to sort of say it doesn't matter if he's a five star or four star. It, it matters that, that, you know, Harson believes in the kid. Harson's great with quarterbacks. And this kid is not Bo Nix, who's going to run around and create and make you crazy sometimes and then find the receiver down the field. He's going to drop back. He's going to throw the ball. They're going to move the offense down the field. Big arm. Sometimes he's gonna a killed. little inaccurate. He's going to get killed. And it really and he's Bo Nix get... is running for his life is because there's no offensive lineman at Auburn. And I already went through the numbers that, that Gus decided that he forgot the offensive line existed in recruiting. Yeah, for like three years, he had like no offensive alignment. Right, and it's going to take them three years to fix that offensive line issue unless they get lucky with, you know, a couple of true freshmen. You know, Florida State had two true freshman offensive linemen that impacted last season, but they still went three and five. As long, Mike, as long as Auburn doesn't run two men in motion, one man back to the short side, screen, you know, bubble screen to the short side, all the crazy stuff that Gus tried and never worked, but looks good on paper. As long as they don't do that, I think this is a win. They won't. But the problem with Auburn is, you know, when you're down in distance, 
you have the, you have a down and distance issue. If you're running the ball great, things are great under Gus. But if you have a down and distance issue with your quarterback and that offensive line so bad, you, you just run it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Holden, uh, I would if I were you, I would you know start practicing zigzag moves in my backyard, um, and you know maybe. I don't know, find a rabid dog in the neighborhood to chase you around so you can work on your escapability because that offensive line is not going to be fixed anytime soon. Sam Horn, A plus. You give it an A, A plus yeah. for Missouri to go into Georgia and get this kid that a lot of people liked and wanted who yes. threw 41 touchdowns and, and is a very good decision maker. I think this is a huge get for Missouri. Interceptions are a little high, but touchdowns are so high you almost forget about the interceptions also a baseball player i love this kid i think he's i i think we have him uh a little low actually nationally i think he's a very very talented quarterback throws it all over the field effortless look will gain weight once he gets to missouri and playing for Drinkwitz, i think is going to be very very good for him i think that is a huge get beats tennessee and many others for him very very good i think horn is not a sleeper because he is ranked pretty high, but he could be ranked even higher after seeing some of these other quarterbacks. Yeah, and that's back-to-back four-star quarterbacks for Eli Drinkwitz at uh, Missouri, so that's very good news for them. Cade Lubnick, I love I love your A+. Uh, again, a lot of people say, you know, Austin Westlake, uh, you know, system quarterbacks. Yeah, they've had a few great ones, obviously, uh, over the years, but um, you know, these kids come out and they're serviceable. I don't think this is a serviceable quarterback. I think this is a very good quarterback who is in line with, you know, the, 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 the lineage here, you know, Deshaun, Trevor, Uangalele, Klubnik. I think it's going to continue on. I definitely think so. And like, just like you said, one beats Ewers in the state championship game, which you could poo-poo that all you want, but head-to-head, he won. Second of all, fits the system perfectly. He's a Dabo kind of personality, a competitor, a little bit of a fiery spirit on the field. I love that. I think he's going to recruit well for this class if that's even needed. And I definitely think he fits in well there with what they want to do offensively and culturally. Love it. Home run. Love it. Uh, Jacob Newth. Uh, Minnesota, you gave it a B plus. I give it a B. Um, you know, Minnesota is not going to go out and get a five-star quarterback. We know that, um, this kid's from South Dakota and that's the reason why I'm downgrading your grade a little bit. Yes. Cause he plays against absolutely nobody. Absolutely. Nobody had a few interceptions, a little high. That was a little worrisome, but in typical Midwest fashion, he sent me a message yesterday, thanking me for putting yes. him in the article agreeing with my analysis which i don't think has ever happened right and then saying that he needed to work on some things so i love the kid i should have probably made him an a plus after that plus a- iowa and kansas state came in late and minnesota got him which is yeah. impressive so yeah. uh i like the kid you know and i hate to make comparisons like this but he's a little like kirk cousins in high school yeah and kirk Cousins was a three-star who played a little bit better than you know the, the 12 interceptions in South Dakota worry me because I think I would have trouble yeah. finding 12 defensive backs who could actually catch a pass to intercept from me. Yeah. But, but I do like the yes or no, sir. I do like the coachability. Um, you know, clearly he's got either a normal father or he does not have a father <laughs> because quarterbacks are That's nuts so involved, yeah. and everybody complains and their parents get all upset and you know, this is not that kid. All right, we're going to disagree big time here. Malik Murphy, you gave it a B plus. Yes. Now, I'm taking all things into consideration. I'm going to go C plus, and I'll tell you why. Hmm. He hasn't played. They wanted Ewers. Uh, there are two other quarterbacks in the state of Texas. One of them we're going to get to in Connor Wegman and Klubnik, who are better than Malik Murphy. They didn't get either of those. And so here's a West Coast kid that's coming to Texas who hasn't put together a resume at all. I just can't give him better than a C-plus right now. Yeah, but you don't think – well, that's why I gave him a B-plus because he has potential for A-plus. 
But you don't think I they could have gotten Nick if they went hard after Klubnik instead of Murphy? They ch- it seems like Sark chose Murphy over Klubnik, don't you think? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I maybe he did. I, I don't know. And and Sark knows more about offense than I do. But I, I worry about the resume. Um, the resume no. is concerning, and as I wrote, that is concerning. But he did not have a junior season in California because of the COVID nineteen pandemic. It's now gone, so they could have a season. <laughs> And he, uh, I know, I know this is not going to sound good, but in camp and seven on seven settings, he is phenomenal. Absolutely. He was great at pylon in Arizona. Obviously we want to see him, how, how he does play on a field. That's going to be a big time thing, but from a physical standpoint and the way he throws a football, he's up there with anybody in this class. Shout out to Ryan Burns, Stanford. Uh, Anthony Morelli at Penn State, two of the best yeah. seven on seven quarterbacks you're ever going to see in your life. And neither no, I hear you. Did anything. So, listen, I'm not, I'm not rooting against the kid. I just think with so many, I mean, there's, there's three quarterbacks in the state of Texas you could make a case for being five stars. Yeah. Uh, and they're not going to get one of them and they're going to rely on a kid from California. So that worries me. Uh, so we could disagree on that. Okay. Zach Pyron going to Baylor. Uh, you know, a three-star kid, low three-star. Um, <laughs> yeah. C? C, I think C You is gave there. a B minus. I give a C because, again, there's so many quarterbacks in Texas. You're going to Pinson Valley to get your guy. I just don't see why that would be a good fit. And is this the – is this the guy to turn around that offense? Charlie Brewer's stock went way down after Dave Aranda arrived. I don't know if this is the guy to make Baylor's offense start flying all around the field once again. So I don't think Baylor, I I think Baylor's in big trouble. I do too. And again, he's starting to get coaches in there and, and, and his own people, but uh, they're in two years, there's going to be a a really hot seat there. Um, Yeah. Ty Simpson. Okay. So I love Ty Simpson. Uh, I I wanted to compare him to Mac Jones, but that's kind of too much of a layup. Um, you know, he's a little bit thicker than Mac was, but the accuracy, the feel for things, the, the confidence, the quiet confidence that Mac, Mac has quiet confidence on the field. You know, he was yeah. kind of a loud mouth at Often. camps, which was yeah. great. But in talking to Sark and some other people who dealt with Mac at college, they said he's the most competitive kid ever. And I think Ty Simpson's like that. So you gave it an A minus. I'm going to agree with that as well as a football coach's son, which always helps. I think as a quarterback. Yeah, love football coach's son. Love that, you know, he basically was no nonsense in his recruitment and was down to Alabama and Clemson. I mean, could you pick two better schools to uh, be deciding between? Uh, Sometimes runs around a little too much and freelances and then chucks it down the field, and that's not going to work in the SEC, and he's going to get his head taken off, or he's going to get yelled at by Saban for throwing interceptions that are unnecessary. So he has to kind of get that out of his game a little bit. And I am concerned a little bit that in, you know, sort of Northwest Tennessee, is he really facing elite division one players, but very, very skilled kid and a coach's son. I love, I think he'll be just fine at Alabama. And and I don't think he has the arm talent right now to freelance the way he is. Um, But I think his arm will get stronger as he adds weight because right now he's, you know, he's still a skinny kid. Yeah. AJ Swan, Maryland, you give this a B plus. I'm going to agree with you here. I know he's he's a high three star, but this is a a thick physical kid who has this competitive nature about him and is willing to basically destroy his body to make a play. Yeah, that's the thing that I love about him. And probably what you need at Maryland to make them competitive in some of the games is this kid that's just going to run through a wall, that's going to force his teammates to do the same thing, that's going to go out and actually believe that they could beat Michigan or Penn State or whoever they're playing that weekend. And uh, I think I think that's a perfect fit. Probably should be a four-star just based on that, like, you know, how headstrong he is and how competitive he is and all of those kinds of things. So I like that pickup very much. For Maryland. Yeah. And then finally, Connor Wegman, Texas A&M. I like him a lot. Now, of the three in state, uh, he would be third for me. Um, me too. 
you know, Ewers and, and Klubnik are two, I believe both five-star level prospects, but you know, that's not for me to say, um, you know, Wegman is a thick kid. Um, he reminds me a little bit of, of Stockton, you know, in his build, um, a little taller, but I just worry about, you know, the arm strength a bit. Um, yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it's, when you look at him, throw the ball deep, it's one of those things where it looks like he's putting a whole lot into it to do it. Yep. Um, but Jimbo will do well with him. I mean, you gave it an A minus. I'm going to give it a B plus. Yeah, I definitely agree. It looks sometimes like he's throwing a 50 pound football and uh, the motion is a little weird and the running around works. But again, in the SEC, that's not going to work as well. So the one concern other than that, obviously, and I gave it a minus, so I like the kid a whole lot, but is his style a fit for what Jimbo wants to do? I think they ran the ball 372 times last year and passed it 302. So there's going to be a lot of running involved, a lot of running backs involved, a slower type of offense. We've seen Texas A&M play there, you know, against good teams, they're not going to be scoring 40 and 50 points. And that's the kind of style I think Wegman really likes to play under but he is a talented kid and Jimbo is a very talented quarterback coach mm -hmm. so he will figure him out and use him well yeah and he's got big shoes to fill with Kellen Mond former five-star of course who Chris Sims says throws the ball better than Trevor Lawrence yeah I, I I I will continue to say that I don't understand why people like Kellen Mond that much and I would be very shocked if he ever ran an NFL offense I, I, I am the biggest Kalamon fan on earth. And I thought that was the most ridiculous statement I've ever read in my life. Yeah. Either you just don't watch or you just are clueless or, or you just want to say something that goes yeah. viral. No, it's shock jock ish type of stuff. And again, he, yeah. he was right on Josh Allen and he's been right on other guys, but you know, listen, this is Trevor versus Mond and it's just not there. No, so, it's not the right. same. Enough of your garbage articles. Let's go to mine. Ready? Mm -hmm. Yes. Five programs that squander the most talent. I don't know how this came into my head. I think I was looking at roster talent in college football and who could win a national championship next year. And of course, it's all the same people, uh, teams. But then I was looking at, okay, I was looking at the playoff and USC has never been there. Yeah. George has been there once. Florida's never been there. A&M's never been there. Texas has never been there. And then I started looking at the recruiting classes. So I put Georgia first. And then some Georgia fans obviously got upset on, on social media because of that. But three straight number one recruiting classes. And yes, they came a play away from the national championship. Yes, they were winning 13 to nothing at the half against Alabama when Tua came in. And, and then Kirby just got out coached um, with it by, you know, Again, I'll played also by a true freshman quarterback. But I digress because Jake Crom was also not exactly an experienced guy. Um, but, yeah, Georgia won, USC, Florida, Texas a and in Texas. Am I missing anybody? What about Michigan? They had the record at the combine, the record yep. in the draft, and yep. what have they done? Well, yeah, and, and that was a good point. And I looked at Michigan, and it came down to kind of Texas A&M, Texas, and Michigan as my final three. And I didn't put Michigan, um, and it was simply because they just haven't developed anybody that anybody ever wants a quarterback. Um, and I think the quarterback position is extremely important. So when I did Florida, it was like, okay, you got Kyle Trask, who's a Heisman candidate, and you still lost four games. Yeah. Uh, Texas A&M pretty much jettisoned Kyle Allen and Kyle Murray out of there. Um, you know, but Mond is at least the third rounder, probably. And then Texas, you know, Elliger is not the best quarterback in the world, but at least he puts up numbers. In Michigan, there's nobody. I couldn't find anybody. So that's why I didn't say Michigan. I think Michigan is definitely one that should be considered. And then we have a thing with Tennessee. Like when kids commit to Tennessee, we're like, oh, maybe we should take a look at them or let's look at their ranking or whatever. And Tennessee is always highly ranked and um, has, you know, obviously been deplorable for years. Yeah, they probably should have been on there. I mean, the, the Tennessee, when you're talking about Butch Jones with uh, three different 
uh, two different top 10 classes and Jeremy Pruitt with a couple of good classes and how bad they've been. Yeah. I probably should have put them in there. I, it, it, the sad part is I was looking at teams that might be relevant to the conference slash playoff picture and Tennessee's not, you know, at least Texas is, um, yeah. A&M is Florida is USC is Georgia, but Tennessee's just not. So that's why I didn't include them in there. So, um, top 10 head coaches. I did that. I, I, I thought I did this recently. So I went back and I looked and I'm like, did I do this? I gotta, I gotta sort of remain consistent. I can't just change it around all the time. But the last time I did it, Urban Meyer was still a head coach. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of redid it and it could change often. Um, there's, there's a few guys that aren't on this list that I think would be, uh, you know, people might get upset at, and, and there's a few guys, you know, on this list that people would say aren't great coaches. Kirby Smart's not on this list. Um, Mm -hmm. and I think people might object to that. And then of course you've got the Gary Patterson's of the world and the guys who do a great job with little, and, and I'm going to do a separate list for those type of coaches. Um, James Franklin's not on this list. Uh, mm. But yet Ed Orgeron and Mario Cristobal are. And Cristobal is like, why? And I'm going to tell you why, because I want to look smart in two years. The yeah. way he's recruiting, they're going to win the Pac-12 again next year. They're going to eventually make the playoff if he stays there. And then I'll look smart. Ed Orgeron's not a great head coach, but the 2019 LSU team was as good as you're ever going to get. So, But Nick Saban, Dabo Swinney, top two. You agree with that, right? Yes. Okay, so I got Jimbo Fisher, Lincoln Riley, and Brian Kelly next three. Have you forgotten Ryan Day? He's number six, and he's only been around a couple of years, so that's why. Now he's been to the semifinals and the finals, uh, the playoff, whereas Brian Kelly obviously has been to the BCS championship game and waxed in the playoffs. Lincoln Riley's been to the playoffs, waxed every time. Uh so I didn't forget him, but I, I I kept him lower because he hasn't been around as long. But that that's definitely a debate. Yeah, and the argument could be made that he might be a better recruiter than Urban Meyer, which is weird to say. But man, they are recruiting at a level unseen there. So. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I gave shouts out to Mac Brown at seven. Um, you know, a, a national championship winning coach. Um, and, and, you know, I thought he didn't have enough in the tank to do anything in North Carolina. And all of a sudden, they're the biggest threat to Clemson in the ACC already. And yeah. if they fix that defense, they're going to be pretty scary. And then I finished it out with Dan Mullen, Ed Orgeron, and Mario Cristobal. So when you look at the, the programs in, you know, the SEC that weren't mentioned, I, I don't really think there was anybody. I mean, obviously, Auburn's had a transition. Um, Lane Kiffin's not there. Uh, you know, Mike Leach certainly isn't there. Uh, Sam Pittman's not there. Stoops isn't there. I, there was no one in the SEC. Um, I've only got one Pac-12 coach, and I couldn't think of any second one to even come close. Mm. I mean, I can't go Clay until Clay wins something. I mean, you can maybe argue Kyle Whittingham, but, you know. Yeah, he's one of those guys that does great with little – and you could argue that for sure. You know, it, it really depends on what your your basis of evaluation is on the coaches. Uh, he's a very, very good coach, does a great job there. Um, you know, Washington essentially won the Pac-12 last year, but I don't think Jimmy Lake's anywhere close to there yet. And, uh, you know, and then, I, you know, you could put a Tom Allen in here. Yeah. But, I think the guy you're missing is Franklin. He turned around Vanderbilt in an impossible situation, came into a very difficult Penn State situation. And I think over the last four years, prior to this collapse year, which was just strange, he had, they and LSU had the same record over the last four years. So that's impressive. Yeah, no, I, I and it was, you know, I like James Franklin and it was not easy leaving him off this list. And I certainly thought of it. And, you know, Harbaugh is a guy that a lot of people would put on this list, but most of it's from his NFL resume. Yeah. Um, but the step back that both those programs took last year, it's made me pause. Now, yes, LSU took a step back last year, but they lost everybody off of the greatest college football team in history, probably. Um, you know, so that's why I put him there. Dan Mullen's the interesting one because a lot of it's based on his Mississippi State 
uh, workings. And not yeah, I mean, he had Mississippi State number one in the country for a little while until they went to Alabama. Yeah, and then at, at Florida, you know, yeah, he won the SEC East last year, which is great, and they gave Alabama their toughest game, which is great, but they also lost a few games that they should have never lost, including the LSU one. So, yeah. so that one's a little iffy, but the, you know, it always causes discussion. I hadn't done it in a while. Um, you know, I should probably rank all sixty-five. That'd be fun. But who's 65th? Whoever takes the Kansas job? I would imagine. Yeah. And then Jonathan Smith at Oregon State would be 64. Let's work our way back. This will be fun. 63 would <laughs> Oregon State didn't do bad last year. They beat Oregon. Yeah, that's true. But that's pretty much all they beat. But, I, but I actually think Oregon State has potential. There's worse programs than 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 Oregon State. In the power five? Yeah. It's not tougher jobs, but worse programs. I mean, Vanderbilt last year was just atrocious. Yeah, Va yeah, Vanderbilt was atrocious. Wasn't Washington State atrocious? Washington State was okay. Oregon State was okay. Oregon State was okay, but Kansas I mean, absolutely Cal sucked last year. You could make yeah. an argument that Oregon State's ahead of Cal, even though Cal was mm -hmm. better a few years ago. I just like arguing, so. What else are we talking about? I don't want to work backwards. That sounds stupid. No, that's that's boring. Last thing, and then we'll wrap it up because we're going to make these shorter because nobody listens. And we're not going to talk TV anymore. Screw that. Come on. No. People don't like it. Like. I don't think they like it. Okay. I really don't. I mean, I don't know. We're the, probably the two, the two only heterosexual males that watch 90 Day Fiance. You I think? doubt that. The ratings are huge. Yeah, but it's it's all women. All right, we can talk a little bit about it, but okay. I did four things that these teams need to take it to the next level and win a national championship. Oklahoma defense, that's easy. Now, Oklahoma was 64 in the country two years ago. They were 28 last season, so that's improving. But did you know <laughs> in four playoff games, they gave up 37, 54, 45, and 63 points in those four playoff games. And the LSU game. I mean, they gave that up in like the first half. I mean, yeah, LSU, I mean, LSU kind of so called off the dogs. It could have been 100. Yeah. It, it, I honestly, it, it almost, I, I think it could have been 100 if they wanted it to be. There was just no stopping them. So, yes. And we've talked about this before and we've been criticized, whatever. Okay, fine. In the Big 12, if your defense is average to decent, it's nationally, it's probably a very bad defense. Yes. So yeah. Oklahoma still has a lot of work to do. Alex Grinch is doing a very good job there, but to beat Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, the teams that they have to beat in the playoff, that is not like playing Texas Tech and Kansas State. No. For Georgia, I put coaching, which is, you know, a little bit of, it, it's over the years. I, I, I don't think Mark Rick was a very good head football coach. And, and that's from the beginning of his, tenure uh that's even from his days at florida state i i don't think he was a great coach i think he was a nice guy and a good recruiter yeah um, and i'm not sure kirby is a great coach either obviously you know they were up at the half against alabama and 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 you know they let a true freshman come in and pretty much take over that game and yes i know there were some questionable calls and georgia should have won it all like i get it georgia fans but it didn't happen um, you know, everybody's going to remember the fake punt with Justin Fields and how that quarterback situation played out and how he handled that. And that's part of being a head coach. So I, I couldn't think of anything else. I couldn't think of anything else that Georgia needs except for consistent, better coaching. And maybe they'll get that offensively this year, um, you know, with JT Daniels and the new offensive coordinator and new offensive system. But is there something I'm missing with Georgia? Well, I think, uh, how, yeah, if you take how to handle quarterbacks into the coaching situation, yes, then you had, you know, three five-star quarterbacks and only one stayed. You know, yeah. that's that's a problem. One of those was Justin Fields, who was the best of the bunch, and you didn't play him. So that was definitely a coaching mistake. But I also think they need another playmaker or two on the outside. That was they the are other two, thing I thought of, you know? They're too run-heavy. They're... You know, they I got mean, Pickens, you know, but Pickens, Kyrus Jackson's okay. They don't throw, they still don't really throw to the tight ends, you know. And, so, and we see what Nicole Hardman can do, yeah, at the NFL level and what he 
you know, he wasn't he wasn't bad at Georgia, but what he what he didn't do at Georgia compared to what he did at, at the NFL level. So I get that too. That, like you that look at player. Alabama and the, I mean, that's the comparison. Last year they had Smith, Michi, Waddle, you know, uh, the tight end that they threw to all the time, whose name is now escaping me. Forrestal. No, the uh, the other kid from Chicago. Oh, yeah. Billingsley. Oh, Billingsley, that's right. So, and, and th- is that what Georgia's offense looks like? Not really. I mean, they kind of get up there and slam it and, give it to Zamir White or James Cook. So they need a little bit more of an inventive offense, another playmaker, um, and better coaching. We already talked Notre Dame, QB and speed. Uh, we don't have yeah. to really talk about that. I mean, they, they haven't had an outside speed receiver or a, a speedy slot receiver uh, since um, – oh, what's his name? I, his name just completely fell out. Will Fuller. Um Yes. You know, they need guys that can stretch the field and, and they need quarterbacks that can throw it downfield. So that's easy enough. And then Ohio State was a tough one. I'm like, okay, Ohio State hasn't won since 2014. You know, they were throttled by Clemson once. Then they lost in a close game that they were winning 16 to nothing against Clemson. Then they beat Clemson and they got throttled by Alabama. What's missing? Uh, and, and when they won the national championship, they had a third string quarterback, but they had Zeke and you know, a great yeah. defense. And I think it's consistency. So what I said is sometimes the offense comes together and the defense doesn't. And this past year, you could look at the secondary as the weakness. Um, two years ago, it was red zone offense. I mean, that red zone offense of theirs killed them against Clemson. They should have blown them out. Um, and, and they're just so talented. They're going to win a national championship. Out of these teams, Oklahoma, Georgia, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Ohio State's going to win a national championship. I'm sure of it. Um, I don't know. Georgia would be second, and then Oklahoma, Notre Dame, I don't know if they will. Um, but consistency for Oklahoma, for Ohio State, I mean, they just got to be a consistent football team, and I think they'll win a national championship. Yeah, I have no problem with that. I, and, I, and again, it is consistency. This, year, this past year, it was the secondary, and they just happened to go up against a wide receiving core that was just unbelievable and incredibly difficult to stop, plus a running back who is phenomenal and a quarterback – who was playing out of his mind at just the right time. So I I don't know if I'd have the same list of who would be, I, I think it would go Ohio State, Oklahoma, Georgia, Notre Dame. I don't know if Georgia's, I don't know if consistently every year Georgia is all that close to winning a national championship yet until they get enough people on the offense to be able to score points. Um, yeah, and the only reason I went Oklahoma third and I think we all agree Notre Dame is fourth because of the academic restrictions that they have and they're you know they don't have any recruiting advantage whatsoever and blah 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 yeah. um was because of the amount of points that they give up I mean yeah you just have to have a game or two in the playoff where you can't you give up less than 37 points um you're not going to score 40 every game so that's why I had them third but um real quick TV real quick Okay, so 90 Day Fiance. I'm I'm starting to root for the crazy blonde. The Ukrainian? Yeah. I think he's stringing her along. Well, as you saw, did you see last night? Oh, no, I didn't see it yet. Is that when she went home? Wait, what the hell is today? Two, I mean, Tuesday. Uh, two no, I, saw, I think I saw Sunday. Yeah. Well, the previews show that she gets the Dumped. boot, gets sent back to Kiev. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I always thought it was Kiev too. Yeah, they say Kiev. I don't understand, but but I I will tell you that. Okay, yeah, I get it. She threw the ring at you, but it's just fun, man. You know. Yeah, at some point you just have to get over something like that. You know. I think today is National Get Over It Day too, March 9th. Yeah. So, um, but I'm rooting for her also because I've become infatuated with um, the way she looks. You know what the other thing is, is what I found strange is she went dress shopping, but she didn't, she wasn't even his fiance, which no. almost forced his hand, I think. But she had to, there were two weeks left. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. And he's a guy that, um, you ever see Jim from the office and he does gives that like mm face. That's yeah. what Mike does the whole time. And he looks so tired all the time. He needs a nap. Well, wow, listen, he's got a three hour freaking commute there and, and the three hour commute back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would just go to work. And come home and stay all week. That's it. I would never even say hi to anybody. So I get why he's tired, but I mean, come on, you know, make a decision. Um, 
Jovi and the strip club. Oh my God. What Listen, a mess. You, you cannot go into a strip club and, and come out in an hour. It's, it's virtually impossible. Unless it's like the breakfast shit. <laughs> it's the steak and legs. <laughs> you can't. So, and then, so he goes there at like, like 11 o'clock. We'll just go for an hour. Yeah, yeah. And, and the throwing of the, the money at that, it's just, just not good. Biggest stack of ones I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I, I, I've seen, you know, uh, I've seen rap videos with millionaires throwing yeah. money at, at strippers and there's less money than Jovi and his idiot friend are, are throwing. And, and does know. anything sound worse, Mike, than drinking all night in a strip club and then getting an early morning flight to Vegas? <laughs> you, know. you know, if you're in your 20s, maybe, maybe I've done it, you know, but when you get over 30, it's impossible. And, and yeah. she's like, you know, no nonsense. She's having a kid. She doesn't want him to party and drink. She doesn't want him hanging out with strippers. Plus I she like fell her. down and got hurt and he left that same night. Well, that's true too. I, and I, you know, listen, I would have wanted to leave too, but there's no yeah. way I could have got away with it. No way. I mean, yeah. pregnant fall down, Ugh. you're in for at least four or five days. Um, I hate the Tariq situation. It bores me. I'm not even watching it. What about Minty? I don't care. Who cares? No, I don't either. Minty? I don't care. It's just who cares gross. about his girlfriend who wants to bring a third into the relationship, but yet gets jealous when they do. You know, yeah. you're boring. You're 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 all boring. Uh, I don't care about them. Who am I missing? Uh, oh, the worst one. The the kid from Virginia with the the oh, oh. yeah. He's a doofus, and you know, <laughs> I mean, is. she's she, you know, she's not the the brain surgeon of no. the world but she's 10, 10 times smarter than him and very direct and it's clear that he you know he thinks that you know working on a farm is is taking care of cute animals and you know uh the whole wedding thing that 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 occurred you know and again yeah you appease them sure you don't give a crap where you get married or when or how so right but you act like you're interested well you do you have to you know and what you do is you hope you act interested enough, but yet you bungle a few things where they say, I'll just take care of the wedding. You know, like you say, I'm going to get the DJ. And then you, 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 you like hire a band yeah. you know, that vomits on stage or something. And you show her a video of it. And she's like, what are you doing? That's right. That's the band. They're a great wedding band. And then she's like, no, no, I'll take care of it. Let me take care of this. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's what you do. There's another one, isn't there? Oh, oh, the fake one with the ugly guy with the sweaty hair and the, 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 the hot girl from uh, France. Oh yes. Them. That's not real. That's boring. Yeah. That, that, that is super boring. I, I don't, I don't even like them. And oh, then, oh, oh, oh yeah. What's his, my, my guy, my guy. I love him. What's his name? Zied. I love Zied. Zied is the most agreeable person on earth. Right. Well, and she the, goes to, she goes to work at the fried chicken place all day. Yeah. And he, he has no way to get around town. He just has to sit in the apartment with no furniture. Right. But he says and now he wants to great. get married before Ramadan because it's a religious thing. And she's like, OK, come to America, leave your family. Right. And then I won't marry you. But I mean, he, he's agreed to everything. Like, yeah. you know, he, he gets off the plane and, and, and her stupid daughter and her husband are bitching that he looks tired. Well, yeah, he's yeah. tired. It was like an 85 hour flight. But he's like, I'm not tired, baby. Everything. Yeah. You know, and then he they go out after, you know, and he puts up with that. The apartment's crap. He's like, this is beautiful, baby. I love it. She takes yeah. him on like a surprise horse carriage ride, which, you know, nobody on earth wants to go on. And he goes, this is great, baby. I love it. You know, like he's agreeable to everything. Yeah. He wants one thing. And, and no, he can't, no, won't do it. So yeah, won't do it. forget about her and her chicken. I what like about the What about the one in the Dominican who... Uh, the lady from Grand Rapids, Michigan, who oh, is now with Harris. Forgot about her. Now she is inebriated 100% of the time. Yeah, that voice does not match the, the, the woman. And now she's with the cousin? Yes, Harris, who's now, who now tells her that he loves her and she's going to take him to America now. You think Harris is looking for a ticket to America? Ticket to ride, baby. <laughs> now she 
apparently has a, a only fans or something oh my god she's 52 right and she's a lunatic and yeah. apparently on her only fans i've seen uh you know like people talk about it i'm not on it she's just naked all the time so mm-hmm. i think she's just an insane crazy person but yeah. i find that storyline annoying as well yeah not a lot of great ones that we really care about that deeply I do love Zied though, but Mike and, and the, the Russian girl are the ones that really keep me going. I mean, she's, she's definitely sent home and crying and all that stuff, but I am infatuated with the way she looks. I don't know why. Why? Can you explain? No, I can't. I, I do not look at women as objects, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. We're, yeah, we're not allowed to do that, right? No. When did that happen? I don't know. I lost track. Can they look at us as objects? Can they can they look at us as objects? <laughs> I think they do circles. But I'm saying, I, yeah, I mean, are they allowed to though? <laughs> like, is all this eye candy allowed to be talked about? But I can't talk about them. I do watch the Ellen Show, and when they bring out men with no shirts on, there is a lot of cheering, which I find peculiar. But uh, hmm. I don't want to go down this road. Yeah, neither do I. I. There's no road we can go down. Our podcast cannot be interesting at all in any way shape or form because we can't talk about anything that's real right. so let's talk about high school quarterbacks and gorney's stupid a through b ratings and let's talk about my dumb list of top coaches and five people will listen and we'll do it again next week sounds good are we doing helmets nah which one do you like what's the one with like the white bottom and then it looks like it's like graffiti right over your right shoulder this shoulder Yes. No, lower on the first level. Oh, oh. Oh, that's a Baylor. Oh, graffiti. Okay. Well, first of all, this is Indiana. No, two over. This one. Two over. Next this, one. Yeah. We, we looked at this one last time. This is the... Uh, oh, that's Oklahoma State. State. Oh, the way it was glaring Gorgeous. in the sun. Yeah. The way it... Barry Sanders, Pistol Pete. Yeah, that's a good one. The Texans, the Broncos. You know what this is right here? You know how much money this is worth? That's a cool helmet. This is a game-worn Stefan Diggs helmet from the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. Nice. Remember when they gave him, like, the the particular stickers for um, particular outfits in the Army and stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is Diggs. It's got the scratches on the top from the hits he took. He almost took a, a, a kickoff back. I remember that game. It's got his dirty visor. Um, and so the problem with it is it's there's no, you know, proof that it's game-worn. But it's if, if there was proof it was game-worn, it's worth a ton of money. Uh, and whoever did the decals for the U.S. Army that year, which was, I believe, 2000. 12 i think they hired a blind person or something they're not even oh my they're bubbled they're i mean i could i could take a decal i could put it next to the helmet and i could sit my fat butt on top of it and yeah. it would come out smoother than this smoother than that oh yeah i do see it it's it's, it's <laughs> bubbled up top who does that <laughs> eh, might have been schmidt I guess. I don't yeah. know if you... No, will never do <clears throat> All, right. All right. I think we're done. Yeah, I'm done. Ask me next week. I'll show you my Trevor Lawrence signed football from the uh, Rivals Camp Series QB Challenge when he was 14 years old. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. All right. We're done. We'll talk yeah. uh, next week.